We should have had that on the recording. Bev's going to go get her thingy. The thingy. <laughs> All right. So we're going to start with the um, cranberry crumble bars. Hi, Kathy. Hi. How are you? Okay. You're so not in your shiny. kitchen. Are you I'm just like watching it. us today? What? You're not in your kitchen. Are you just watching us today? No, I'm going to set this up in here. My, this is my den. This is on my computer. And then I'm going to set it up on my phone in the kitchen. All so right. The kitchen dies. I can run down here and see what you're doing. <laughs> Perfect. I got to do something. <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> All right, let's, I'm going to um, just, I'll just start sharing so we can start gathering up the ingredients. So we're going to go uh, cranberry crumble bars. We'll get, so I turn your oven on, we'll get the base going, and then we'll also start cooking the cranberry sauce. I'm going to have a little bit of advantage here because I actually made almost this exact same cranberry sauce for Thanksgiving and I froze my leftovers and it should be just enough for these bars. So um, yeah, I'm cheating a little bit. That's okay. how you, that, or, or resourceful right? And uh, right. then we'll, we'll finish that up and then we'll get into, we'll get our pork loin uh, or chicken, if you decide to do chicken, into your crock pot with the sauces and things we need to get that going. And then we'll start on the turkey chili. So let's share screen. Do you, yeah. Do you think we can do the, um, uh -huh. the, the one in a, instead of the slow cooker and a pressure cooker? I'm going to, I'm actually going to do it in my instant pot, but I'm going to try the slow cooker function because I've never tried it before, but you totally oh. could. Yeah. Um, I'm just, I don't know the timing. Yeah, I know. That's what I was uh, trying if, to think. I bet if you Google it quick and say how much chicken you have, it'll get yeah, you. Well, yeah. I mean, I know like chicken breasts, it's like five minutes. Yeah. It's not long. So, I mean, chicken thighs are almost even less dense, like. Yeah. Why? So I don't even know. So and then yeah. maybe um, you may want to go with a little liquid in there to cook them, and then just add the sauce on the warm function, huh. and kind of stew in it a little bit. Hey Kim. Okay. Hey Kim. Blue. So yeah. Okay. See what works. Yeah, I don't know. I'd, do, I'd Google it and see it, but I'm gonna. I don't even know how to operate my slow cooker on this thing, so I thought I'd try it today. You're gonna learn. I've done it once. I did it once with job. mine and it like, I don't know what I didn't like about it was the way that my pressure cooker is the ring, like kind of almost expands when it gets, once it's been, you know, pressure cooking for a while. Yeah. So then when I took it off and, yeah, it you know, to stir it and everything, then the, yeah, the seal didn't fit exactly right yeah. to then you know put it back on so I just didn't really care for it as much but um yeah but yeah so but that was my experience my ring rarely seals so I should be oh. fine I have to sit there and like I think I need a new ring because I have to sit there and yes. like maneuver it to like okay come on let's get on here yeah yeah definitely <laughs> yeah all right I, I can't even tell you guys how excited I am for these crumble bars. Like I've been thinking about them all week. <laughs> I'm like, these are going to be so good. Uh, me too. <laughs> so I'm going to, I got a Ninja because Target had an amazing sale. So it has like the blender cup and then it has, this is like the food processor and then it has the blender. So I'm going to try it out in here. Um, Cause I think it wants you to food process those first ingredients to get them, you know, really small. So we put them in in the uh, eight by eight pan. So these can be your healthy, either your not so great breakfast this can be your like Christmas breakfast, or this can be the uh, healthy, what people would consider the healthy version of dessert at work.
Yeah, I'm just doing the, the turkey chili. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. I'm doing it with chicken because that's what I had in my freezer, chopped chicken. Perfect. And I figured once we finish it, we're going to eat it and then we have a party to go to. So I'm eating it before the party so I don't. Nice. It's a, it's a great chili and it freezes so well. I'm actually going to, I talked about not making it cause I have some in the freezer, but I'm going to make it and I'm going to freeze it for, um, David's aunt and uncle. Cause she has a surgery coming up. So then okay. get, get some make ahead meals for them. Yeah, that's good. So this party, she's having appetizers and desserts. So I'm going to try to stay away from the desserts. <laughs> The only thing I know she has. Pick the one that looks the best and enjoy yeah. that one. The, one. the only thing I know she's doing is um, sushi, which I don't Ooh, really that'll be eat, good. eat too much. But how do you count sushi? Well, it's a lot of rice in comparison to the amount of fish and vegetables. That's what I think. Um, so depending on how she does it or how thick the rice is, I don't know. Well, she's you know, buying it. Yeah, okay. So... Yeah, you just have to look at it and see, kind of gauge how much um, rice you think is in there. Like when I made that uh, sushi on the, or the nori rolls on the yeah. set, I used a half a cup of rice for the whole thing. So, and it, it still had a pretty decent amount of rice in there. So I would say it's probably between a half a cup and three quarters cup rice for an entire roll, which is usually about okay. eight pieces. Um. So you so can kind of go off there. It's basically huh? rice, fish, and vegetables, right? Yeah. Well, okay. and avocado. So you'll have some fats in there, depending on what, avocado. what style they use. Yeah. Okay. And they wrap it in seaweed or something? Well, so you can wrap it in seaweed. You can wrap it in rice paper, or it could just be wrapped in, ri in rice. And then the rice is on the outside. Okay. Yeah. So you just have to see. There's lots of different kinds. Okay. Um, and if she's getting it from a restaurant, she may even have sashimi. So those are pieces without any rice or nigiri, which those are pieces with just fish and rice. Oh. And then you'll know the, con the contents a lot more. Okay. Um, and they're also really good. Then you get a lot more of the fish too in it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hey Kim, we're starting on the crumble bars. I see you're reading stuff. I see that. Thank you. Sorry, my dad, I was having trouble getting on and then my dad called right as I- No worries. On. No worries. All I right, guess I'm what happened to me today? So I went out at yesterday and got this pork loin. And like a couple hours ago, I went to uh, put it in the crock pot. And when I opened it up, it was totally bad. It was totally bad. I had to throw ah. the whole thing out. Oh. And uh, I was just lucky I hadn't put the put anything else in the crock pot before I opened it up. And uh, yes. so I had to go back out and get another one. Uh, you I should hate bring that. it back and get your money back. Lately. I would have, I would have taken it back, but I couldn't find the receipt and I had, um, oh. I, it, the, the date on it was uh, like past. I didn't read it when, I, I guess I didn't read it when I picked it up, oh. and, uh, but I knew immediately as soon as it opened up that it was bad. So lesson learned. Right. That happened to us. We bought clams one day and like after we shop, you know, my husband, we walk into the parking lot and he goes, it really smells around here. And we got home and said, it's those clams. They were like in a package and they were like bad. I went right back to the store and returned them. Yeah, that's a, that's a great idea. It, this rivaled the um, one time my husband went to the grocery store earlier this year or earlier this fall. And uh, he went without me and he left a bag of meat and chicken in the car. In oh. the back of my car. I had, oh, no, yeah. I had no idea until like five days later. I was oh. like, what is that horrible smell in my car? It was chicken and hamburger. So oh. disgusting. Oh. You, know what, you know what's bad too? We've had, I buy milk and the contain is leaking. Oh yeah, that's so awful if like you get, get that smell in your car. Oh God, and it's all over the car, all over the house. It's like, yeah. oh. My, my dad was telling me they're sending me a meal for Christmas. So I, I don't have any control over it. I wonder what they're sending you. They did it one year and it came after Christmas. Like they told me like two days before Christmas, hey, look for a package. We sent it to you. And then, uh, you know, I'd already bought everything for like Christmas dinner. So we ate that. And then like the day after Christmas, this ham showed up with a whole bunch of stuff in it. So I, I'm assuming it might be a ham again. But 
That's funny. It is funny. I think it's a, it's, I don't know. All right, I'm gonna mute myself really quick. So I'm gonna start this thing on the on the blender. Oh, maybe I can't mute myself here. Wait. Oh, there we go. All Kim, we were joking before you got on because my cat's sitting over here watching me cook that you should have your cat on too and then they can talk to each other. <laughs> she was just talking, so that's funny. Yeah, if I'm in the kitchen, you're going to hear. <laughs> That's a lot of almonds. Is Beverly on today? Yes. All right. Look what I just picked up when I went to get my pork roast. It is a buttercup squash. Oh, nice. I've never seen buttercup. Well, it's the same as the other, as Kabuka, right? Is that how you yeah. say that? Yes, it's the same. So I yeah. guess I'll get one. So I might cook it now if you tell me what to do <laughs> later. I'll probably cut right. it in half and roast it, right? Uh, you can do that. Yes, you can do that. I like to, we like to, it's kind of a pain, I'm just gonna be honest, but we like to peel ours and then cube it and okay. roast it that way. Oh, interesting. Okay, I'll yeah. think about that. Yeah, it's, I will not, it is a pain to peel. I'm not even going to like act like, oh, it's so easy. No, you like need like the, the, the peeler that has like the teeth on it to take oh, off yeah. that rind. But I yeah, don't like, that. So you know, I might just roast it. Yeah, you should probably just roast it then. But yeah, <laughs> yes, it is so good. I'm excited for you. <laughs> I can hear the excitement in your voice over the squash. <laughs> It will, this will be the second time because I gave it a try last year and didn't uh -huh. like it, but I thought it was, I had an old one or something. I thought I had an old one. It was tasty. I don't know who has Beverly for Secret Santa, but you should give her like a truckload of squash. <laughs> oh my gosh, I was totally thinking that yesterday. <laughs> Does anybody else think that hydrate tastes a little like soapy? No, but I usually like double up when I put it in a like, bowl. It's a texture thing. I just oh, wonder no. if anybody else thought that. Oh, darn it. 
Okay, so it says in the instructions, I like to, anytime I'm smashing, I usually just use a flat bottom glass because then it can get your thing nice and flat and even, your crust. And you can put a little pressure on it and it doesn't go everywhere. I never use cornstarch. What is it? It's a thickener? Yeah, so that's how it's gonna thicken up that. Um, anytime you make like a fruit crisp, it has cornstarch in it usually, because then everything thickens up with the fruit juices and there's natural pectin in it already. So that also thickens a bit. Like the cranberry sauce I made, I didn't have any thickener in it, but when I blended it, it really thickened up nice. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that cornstarch just makes it all stick together. So then it doesn't make your bottom crust soggy it all sticks together like a gravy versus letting some of the, you know, liquid penetrate the other things. And if you're counting your containers, this gets cut into 12. So they're, I think that's right, right? Let's look just to make sure. Cause yeah, when you're doing the brownies it gets cut into 16. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna increase my Okay, so once your your crust will go in for 15 minutes, um, and it and uh, it's kind of funny, it has you preheat at 350, but your crust goes in at 375. You increase it. Oh, sorry, you increase it at the end. So you do 350 for the 15 minutes, and then the last five minutes is 375. So while your crust is going, you'll want to get together your cranberries, your orange juice, coconut sugar in a pan, get that going so that it can cook. And uh, I think you only boil it looks like three to seven minutes or five to seven minutes. You'll hear the cranberries popping too. And then they kind of release their air and then get soggy. Well, yeah, it says, to, it says that they're supposed to be coarsely chopped. I'm like, why would you bother chopping them? Well, I think because then they're not too big of pieces because you're not going to actually blend it or do anything to it after you cook it. So I think have you start smaller to begin with versus, okay. or if you have a um, hand blender, you could just run that through really quick too, like not super hard. And then um, it'll also break it up. So it's either you chop it now or you somehow chop it later. Yeah.
and I would think these will freeze pretty well too if you want to stick them in, you know, let them cool down completely, cut them into bars, and then stick them in the freezer. They might get a little crumbly if they're loose in a bag, but. So I know we've talked about this on our nutrition call, but let's just talk really quick about like why this is considered a better version. Um, Cause you're still, you know, you're, this is a, is a carb and it's a dessert, there's sugar in it. Um, the difference is, is that the, the ingredients you're using to make the crumble has a lot of fiber in it. So you're using the rolled oats, you're using almonds with micronutrients in it and the coconut sugar also has fiber in it, lower glycemic index. So it's not going to spike your um, sugar levels, your blood levels as much because of the fiber in it. So all of those things combined, just make it a better option. Your body will process it better. Obviously there's no uh, artificial ingredients or sweeteners or things like that, alcohols. So all of it's easily processed. Tempted to throw a little cinnamon in my topping. Is anybody else gonna do that? Make it a little more spicy.
how's everybody doing? Are we getting cranberry sauce rolling right now? Then while the cranberry sauce is put together and cooking, because that'll take a few minutes, um, you'll want to get your crumble topping together. It came together pretty fast. I did add a little cinnamon. Um, so it should be, you know, where it's like little nuggets. Oh, I can't hear you, Kim. Did you chop your cranberries or did you just put them in? So Bev and I were just talking about that. So I actually have leftover sauce from Thanksgiving <laughs> that I made that's really similar. So I'm just going to use that. But if you chop them before, then you have much smaller pieces and it'll come together. It'll be a little smoother. Yeah. If you don't chop them. They're going to be, you'll, you'll probably have some tart, you know, you'll get like the whole cranberry a little more, off, it'll be a little more tart, but you, if you have a hand blender and you don't chop them, you can just run it through quick in the pot to kind of yeah. break it up. That's a good idea. Yeah. Cause then you can go to whatever consistency you want. Mine is pretty blended. It's, it's going to be more like a, a jam. It took me a bit to chop up the cranberries because they like to roll away. <laughs> that was like probably one of the most frustrating. <laughs> like whack-a-mole with a knife. Yeah, I never, I never yeah. cut cranberries up before. That's no, I no, I never have either. And apparently they have like little seeds in them. Yeah, yeah. I never saw the I, inside before. <laughs> I, I'm like, what is all of this little, little bally things? I don't, I just thought the learning experience for everyone. <laughs> We don't put any water in? No, it'll, um, the orange juice will be enough. Because okay. you want it to be kind of thick and then it'll, it'll thicken up even more with that cornstarch. So I have to share something because a lot of you have done the reset and I just find this really fascinating. So I don't weigh myself very often, but I have been weighing myself once a week because I'm just curious to see what's happening. And so when I ended the reset, I was at 158.2. I went through Thanksgiving week, weighed myself a week later on Monday, 158.2. Wow. Went last week, weighed myself this morning, 158.2. I'm like, wow. what's going on? <laughs> and like yesterday I had a cheeseburger and French fries and, you know, and I had a normal dinner for me, which was, you know, rice and beans and veggies. Um, but it's like, I still have been having things I want, but then mixing it in with, you know, more veggie based things, but it's been pretty interesting to see that it's like yeah, just wow. totally staying the same. How tall are you? Cause you don't look like you weigh that much. Oh, I'm, um, five, eight. Oh, okay. That explains it. <laughs> and you probably have a lot of muscle too. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully by this stage in the game, I've got some going. I've never, I should go get a DEXA scan and see what, what my percentages are. Well, you ever get that scale? I have like a scale. I think it's hometic that measures the bone, the muscle, the water, and the fat. Yeah. They're, the at-home scales are they're okay. They're, they can be pretty inaccurate based on your hydration and some other things, but like a DEXA scan or a, um, oh, right. the, the stuff you do in the water, they, yeah. they're really accurate, mm -hmm. but it'd be, it'd be nice to kind of track it too. It'd be interesting to see what I was when I started with yeah. body programs and then to kind of go through. Cause I do that scale once a week with all the breakdown to see yeah. what's happening. Yeah, and it's good to see trends too. So if you yeah, can use yeah. the historical data, it's great to see trends. And to see that if you gain, did you gain muscle or fat? It's good to know that. Yeah. You know, even if it's not accurate, it's accurate to that scale. Right, right. Yeah, that's exactly what my chiropractor told me. He's like, they're accurate to themselves. So right. like, I have the Fit Track Dara. And uh, yeah, I mean, it seems like it's probably pretty accurate, but yeah. 
Yeah. And that's like any fitness watch you use or any, you know, anything, if you can track your data over a month or two months or six months, that's going to give you a, a better idea than your day to day, right? Like then yeah. one, you know, workouts, calorie burn, it's going to, you know, if you can kind of see your heart rate and things like that, and how many calories you're averaging burning, it's definitely a better use of the tool than just day to day. Yeah. I used to tell people that about weighing themselves anyway, like just take the average. If you weigh yourself every day, fine. If you want to do that, if you're okay with that, fine. But right. take the average because it'll go up and down and all over. That's the exactly right. And you can see the trend. You know what I mean? If you're looking over, because really, especially with women and cycle, hormonal cycles, oh, yeah. you only can really compare week one of this month to week one of the next month because otherwise, <laughs> you know, they're all off. Yeah, um, exactly. Like, yeah. And you have to look for the trend to see, are you steadily going down and that's your goal? Or, you know, is it, you know, not a downward trend? Totally. All right, I got six minutes left in the oven. Browning up nicely. Does anybody do a cookie exchange or anything where you can uh, test out your bars to see if how they how they go over? <laughs> oh, I have to bring five dozen of something. To where? I know to this cookie thing I said I'd go to next week, and I'm like five dozen. <laughs> That's a lot. Wow. I started thinking about maybe I should get out of that. <laughs> <laughs> this cookie bar is really small. Right? Or make, make Shakeology energy bites. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they'd appreciate that. <laughs> actually, so the fixate, um, the fixate chocolate chip cookies, so you're actually supposed to make them a teaspoon size. And so like a double batch makes almost 20 some odd cookies. Yeah, you could use like the little scoop. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't take yeah, I don't know. You could do those and they don't taste like they're, you know, some special style of cookie. Oh, really? Okay. Oh yeah, they are good. We, we've we been making them for years and I just made them yesterday. Oh, I should so, find those and make them. Oh yeah. They're mm -hmm. the fixate chocolate chip ones. They're just so easy, super easy. And those would definitely yeah. freeze well. Too. So you could make them when you have a second, Kim, freeze them right yeah. away, like after they cool yeah. the first day. And then when they unfreeze, they're going to be just as good. Yeah, that's actually what I did because we, we have, um, we go caroling in two weeks and no one else there is really gluten-free, um, but my family is, and we have, we go in carol and then we eat cookies and have hot cocoa. And it's like, so I bring cookies enough for our family and then some, because I'm not going to be like, don't touch my cookies. You can't Get have our cookies. <laughs> <laughs> These are special. Don't touch them. <laughs> but yeah, so I make plenty. So that's why it's like, okay, we had a couple, tried them. They're already in the freezer waiting to come out in a couple weeks. Perfect. Oh, so they're gluten-free too. Yeah, they're gluten-free, um, dairy-free. And I was, I was toying with the idea of doing another round. They have egg yolks in them. And I have a, one of my friends does not do egg yolks. She has an egg, egg yolks is a big one. Um, 
but so I've been toying with doing them again and using flax eggs and seeing how they turn out. So, but yeah, they're gluten-free and dairy-free. All right. Yeah, and Kim, if you have some gluten-free people at the school, you could be their favorite person. <laughs> I do have gluten-free people at the school. Yeah, they'd really appreciate it, I'm sure. Definitely. But that's what made me interested in that too. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll find the recipe too and um, see if I can stick it in after the recording when I put it in the group. Okay. I think Beverly made a post yesterday about her cookies. I don't know if she put the recipe in there. I think she did. Perfect. No, because it's a fixed date recipe. I shared I shared the eight cookies, um, the eight energy ball no bake cookies that's on the that's on the blog. Although it might be in the blog. Well, I found I don't know, it's it's the, an older I recipe. Blog, but let me look at the blog. Yeah, it's an older, it's an older recipe, so it might be on the blog somewhere. this would be good with the pomegranates too yeah the seeds will be a little more evident though once yes. everything's cooked um but you could do it with any fruit any like stone fruit peaches mm -hmm. you know anything like that any kind of crisp you want to make <laughs> There's a double chocolate fix or a double chocolate cookie in here. I'm not seeing the regular chocolate chip. Like this, the peanut butter chocolate chip cookie. I really need to pay attention to the recipe, to the measurements on the recipe. Like, you know, you know. if it was only a quarter cup of orange juice, I probably just could have squeezed an orange, you know, <laughs> right? My oldest was okay with me buying a big thing of orange juice for his, you know, so then he could finish it off. All right, don't forget about that temperature change after 15 minutes. Is your tree set up, Deanna? Uh, it is, but with no lights or ornaments yet. So it's sitting in okay. the living room and uh, we're gonna decorate it after we're done here. Okay. My uh, youngest was gone last night to a birthday party. So we wanted to wait for him to be back. Oh. Yeah, mine's, mine's not done either. <laughs> it's gonna get done later. I think maybe we'll watch a movie or something later too. What's everybody's favorite uh, holiday movie? Christmas. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Yes, that's a requirement. What was yours, Lily? It was Beverly's. Oh yeah, me too. Yeah, that that's a must. It's it's mandatory. Yeah, there's like well, the few that night. you can't you can't get away from that yeah. one, and you know Christmas Story and Home Alone. Those are like the top ones. You have to watch those every. I just put a post about that today. Which ones are your favorites? There's also, let's see, there's Elf and what was the other one? Oh, Santa Claus. The Santa Claus. Yeah, that one is pretty good. Yes. All I like the Netflix um, Christmas Chronicles, but then we never, I can talk anybody into watching the second one the next year. So this year we're going to watch them both again. Oh, that the second one's really good. Oh, good. I, I heard it was really good, but then I couldn't talk anybody into doing it last year. I was living with a bunch of Grinches, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> on another note, on Broadway, they're going to open up West Side Story. Oh, yeah. And Rita Moreno is going to be in it. The one yep. she, she played in the original um, in 1961. I've been seeing a lot of news stories about her and having that come out again and all the barriers she was breaking with it. She's 90. Yeah. She's going to be 90 right when it opens. And she's going to play Doc's widow, the guy in the store. Okay. 
That should be interesting. Yeah. We'll have to see that one. We're going to have to go fast on our other dishes. <laughs> I'm not totally confident on my sauce, but I do have leftover cranberry sauce in my uh, <laughs> in my fridge, so I could use that. It'll be fine. Did you add the cornstarch yet? Yeah, but it just looks it like chopped up cranberries and, and hardly any liquid. Well, once it boils for a little bit, it should come out a little more. Yeah, mine's probably gonna be too saucy. Mine doesn't have a whole lot of sauce to it. Like it's not runny at all. It's like gooey and just chunks of, of cranberries. <laughs> so we'll see. Okay, that's, that's mine too. Yep. <laughs> Perfect. And Carl's texted us. Did you see that? Are I'm you? not on his text. What did he say? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a happy Sunday. Oh, I guess that was 10 minutes ago. Why is my phone going off then? I don't know. Oh, my, I had to, I, the person that was uh, renewing their, that um, got the total solution pack. She just oh. messaged me and told me that she got it. That's what it is. Oh, good. Carl was before her. <laughs> so, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Carl, Carl was saying that he just finished strong body with Shanti and realized I've been frustrated with my workouts this week. Classic fail. That he went really hard last week and not so hard this week. Uh, just show up is his point. Oh. Sixteen seconds. So you put cinnamon in your crumble? I did. I think that sounds good. How much did you use? You know, I just kind of dashed some in there. Yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking. I'm like, there's I don't not know. much crumble to it. Yeah. Okay, so my mine got a little brown, but not much different than what it was. The edges are a little brown. Yeah, that's how mine was too. Now I'll throw my sauce on here. Oh, my Lanta, now Michael's. <laughs> this must be the texting hour. I, I could just eat the crust. You're just gonna eat the crust. It's pretty good. I can't get my orange juice open. <laughs> oh when up. did you hop on? Hey, a while ago. Really? I I got home late, so yeah. I did. I got it. Hello. Okay, I got it. I'm good. Thanks. I don't Thanks know how help. much my cranberries. How much for moral support? <laughs> yeah. How much cranberry? Who's who's put the cranberry on the crust? Show me how thick it is. Mine is already in the oven, but it. I just put like I put quite a bit. I had a lot to use so I don't want it to be soupy but I did use I don't know I don't know how to you think it's like a you think it's like a half inch 
Yeah. Here, let me hold this up. See what you think. Let's see. This is where this is kind of where I'm at right now. Mm -hmm. Yep. I wonder yeah. if I should just throw the rest of it in there or just go with this. I don't know. <laughs> I'm about ready to add mine. I can show you mine in a second. Okay. I don't want it to be like overwhelming cranberry either, you know? I'm just, I'm afraid it'll get like mushy and I don't want mush. Yeah. So I don't, but I wanted a lot of cranberry taste. So I don't know. Yeah. You have a big pan. So I don't know. It's probably good with the rest of it, depending on how much you have. But I still have, I still have like at least a cup left. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's a lot. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'll just freeze that and. Did you melt your coconut oil for the topping? I did. Yep. And then it came together. It looks like this, you know, they kind of, okay. It'll be like little nuggets. That would have been smart. I didn't do that. <laughs> well, you know, it didn't really say, did it? No, I, did I didn't, it. but I figure it's going to melt anyway. It came crumbly anyway. Together. Yeah, it's like the crumble just barely kind of coats the top. It's not like there's a bunch. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Oh my gosh. Can you see? Okay. Yeah, perfect. Okay, I think that's about the same because mine's just more blended. So I think that's about the same. All right, back in the oven for, let's see how long. Let's, I'm gonna go down here just a little bit. 15 to 20 minutes, I believe. All right, let's do this. Now we can start on our pork. Oh, it's so pretty. Let's take a picture quick here. Okay, don't forget to set your timer. That's a reminder for me. So I'm notoriously bad at putting stuff in and then not remembering it's in there. Ah, all of a sudden the cranberries were all red again. So funny. I thought they were going to be white with the insides. Okay, does anyone need that recipe further? Yell out if you do, I'll leave it up, otherwise we'll switch it. Cinnamon was a good idea. It smells so good. It does smell good, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah you could probably do like a little assortment, you know, a little nutmeg, a little oh, gosh. cinnamon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll let everybody get their stuff in the oven, but if you're ready to um, start on your pork assembly, so you'll want to get your pork loin out or your chicken. This will be great with chicken. Um, we're going to get the pork into the, the um, slow cooker, but uh, I would say you could just finish up your salsa either at dinner time or, um, or if you have a little extra time while we're on here today, because we'll kind of move it along to get started on the turkey chili. Mm. 
Mm, those cranberry bars have potential. I think so too. What's a serving of those? Uh, there's 12. So you would cut that um, okay. four times on one side, three times on the other. Yeah, so they're not gonna be very big. And I believe they're, let's go back and look really quick here. I believe they're one yellow. Oh, they're one yellow, half a purple, one blue and half a teaspoon. And to be mindset, it's an occasional treat, which feels like the, the occasion. Am I right? <laughs> so, and if you want to, I like to saute my meat quick before I do. Um, any kind of slow cooker, it just gives it a little more caramelization before it goes in. So you can totally do that in your instant pot, just saute it quick, or you could do it in a pan and then load it into the slow cooker, or you can just load it in raw into the slow cooker and skip that step, totally up to you. I'm gonna be using um, a salsa verde that I make in the fall. So I take green tomatoes. So usually a salsa verde is tomatillos, peppers, onion, um, some spices. So I do green tomatoes with uh, poblanos. And then sometimes depending on the heat, you can put in a, something that's got a little spice like a jalapeno or something, garlic. I roast all those things in the oven together with regular onion and then um, blend it up in the food processor. And then I just stick it in bags and freeze it for whenever we want it. And it's really great with pork uh, to make like pork tacos and stuff later, or, you know, when you're braising your pork. Did everybody see that there's radishes for your crunchy topping? I haven't done that on tacos before, so I'm excited to try it. I love radishes. Yeah, they're just kind of an okay for me, but I think it'll be a nice little crunch. And plus the way they're, you know, the spicy, like a little bit of spiciness they tend to have. And I think it'll be a good mix.
So I have watermelon radishes. To, yeah. Oh, yeah. Watermelon yeah. radishes. Yeah. And yeah. I was planning on using those. Yeah, they'll be just fine. I mean, really, you could use anything from the radish family. You could use a daikon. You could use the, you know, traditional regular red radish. All of it will be good. Yeah. Well, we buy, I buy a bag of radishes a week and actually Jacob takes those for school. Like oh, he nice. takes them in his lunch. So I'm like, well, I can't exactly steal that because then he won't have his radishes all week. So I'm like, but I have watermelon ones that I, I put in my salad on top of like, so I still do like a version, a very dialed down version of the microgreen salad. I have it almost every day still. I love it. I've had it for, yeah, I've ever since the reset, I've not gone away from it, but I've added back in like chicken on it. And we did go away from the sprouts over the summer, but I think I might get back to them because I can do them again. It was just, it was too warm where they would sprout because I would sprout them underneath my kitchen sink and that was on an outside wall and it was too warm and they would get like moldy really fast. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, but now that it's cooler, we could probably get back to sprouting and right. they'd be good for the week. Yeah. And I just finally tried the ginger miso dressing and I love it. It's so good. So I'm going to throw in um, diced green chilies instead of the uh, jalapeno slices because that's where I'm at with spice levels. So <laughs> I'm doing that as well. So my husband will eat it. What'd you say? I said, I'm doing the green chilies as well. So my husband will eat it. There you go. Yeah. You got to accommodate. You got to accommodate for us spice wimps. My spice level is low. No jalapenos, no chilies. I did use chili powder though. I like it flavorful. I don't like to feel like my mouth is burning. Yeah, right. <laughs> Ooh, I like my mouth burning. I just had a jalapeno margarita on Friday. Oh. So good. God. Ooh. You can. I love ghost pepper. Bring it on. <laughs> Once I ate one of those hot peppers by mistake, we were in a Chinese restaurant downtown in the city, and this red thing was over the top. I just thought it was like a pepper. Well, it was something hot. My mouth was so on fire. I drank about six glasses of water. They say, don't do that. You have to eat bread. I couldn't taste anything after that. Yeah, that is the problem with spicy stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you only taste the spice. My mouth was just burning. My throat was burning. I do love it in a drink though, because it tastes, it comes after. It's like an after. Oh, okay. Okay, how's everybody's slow cooker looking? Are you loaded up? So this one, because it's only a pound, it's a three, four hours, which will be, it's pretty fast. Mine's, I actually ended up doing a pork shoulder, so I'm gonna have a lot more time. Are we, is everybody uh, have everything in? Are you ready to go to the turkey chili? I was doing the salsa. Oh, okay, perfect, yeah. But um, I can do it, all I need is, um, I got the recipe, so I'm good. Okay. All right, then let's, yeah. I don't wanna rush everybody if you're, if you're still. Yeah, my, my, my turkey chili, chicken chili is almost done. 
Oh, I good. Started, I had to start early because I we have to eat now. Yeah. <laughs> and I was afraid the sweet potatoes wouldn't cook. I didn't know that they could cook this quick. I, uh, yeah, I'm going to be subbing in beans because I'm not a big sweet potato fan. <laughs> so. Okay. I love sweet potatoes. My husband doesn't like them, but he said he'll eat this tonight. <laughs> Perfect. So I wouldn't have, so I wouldn't have to make something else for him. So He's willing to try new nice. things. That's good. Yeah, so that's good. I think yeah. he'll like. Sweet Especially potatoes is how I got through the reset. How could you get? I know it's funny, food? Kim. Every time you'd say that you're having a sweet potato, I'd be like, "Oh no, nope, no, thank you. I'll fix something else." <laughs> <laughs> I, I had one every day the last week. <laughs> You know, well, you know, what's funny about that? The thing that gets me like, even before we got on, I ate the brown rice with the, the seaweed sesame seed mix, the nori mm -hmm. uh, gourmacio or whatever they call it. And yeah. the sesame oil. Like I love that every day I have it either with my salad or like, that's my snack. See, that's so, funny. I don't like that at all. <laughs> I love all the Japanese flavors they, in, they put into it. I'm with you, Kim. I was on the sweet potato train and I was, we were like anti seaweed over here. No, thank you. Like either sweet, but team sweet potato or your team seaweed. I agree. Yes. I guess so. Cause yes, it was I'm not. Team both. Sorry. Sorry. going to be team both, Lily. Yeah. Nice. I highly recommend the nori rolls. I think I'm going to make those again. They're so, I well, I've got a bunch of nori still left. They're so delicious. <laughs> But it was funny. I actually, um, I have a, I bought everything for the mushroom barley burgers too to try those. They're on the blog, so that I'm gonna check them out. See how they are, huh? Mushroom barley burgers. That's yeah. So crazy. you do like pearl barley, and then you put in like cooked mushrooms, onion, sage, a little bit of cheese, and egg. So it would be veg vegetarian, um, and then make them into burgers. And then you fry them like a burger and eat them in a bun. Oh, so there's there's no meat. What do you, right. say that again? Say that again. What's it made out of now? Barley. It's barley. Yeah, pearl barley. Okay. Um, and then mushrooms. yeah, just mushrooms, onions. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try them out, and if they're good, then we'll we'll stick them in on one of the yeah one of the food food preps because yeah, you could just make all four burgers and then have them left over. I love barley. Yeah, I do too. I like well, I like just about every grain. So, <laughs> oh, oh, my cranberry bars are maybe done. Let's see. I can't tell that my topping is brown. All right, I'm gonna let it go just a couple more minutes. You put the rad you don't put the radishes in the salsa? No, so you just top it on the tacos. So it's like you do salsa oh. and then you do the radishes on the taco. Okay. All I'm right. gonna sign off. Okay, Kathy. Thank we'll have fun so at your party tonight. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you. you. And um here, I'll stop sharing for a second. We'll grab a picture. Okay. Everybody can jump Hi. on. Just oh, funny. I was like, I was like, wait, Kathy's missing in one of the pictures. And I'm like, nope, you're you've got two going. <laughs> All right, ready? We're two. missing somebody. Oh, I've got it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Isn't that funny? That's what I was thinking too. All right, you guys, we'll see you uh see you later, Kathy. Have a good night. Okay, I'll see you during the week. Thank you. This was great. And I look forward to the mushroom barley burgers. Yeah, and tell us how your chili is tonight, too. Okay, I'll let you know if he likes it. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Yeah, see you later. All right, let's switch over to the chili. And then let's, let me go down here just for a second. So this is two cups is a serving size. So it's a really a pretty good serving size. And you get one green, one red, one yellow, and a teaspoon. So it's a pretty good size meal. You get a little volume with this one. 
Okay, now my crumble's ready. Oh, that cinnamon was a good option. I think it does smell really good. Okay, so it's a little browned. Looks like everything kind of firmed up in there. Now I have to wait an hour. <laughs> I'm excited about this crumble. Look, it looks so pretty. It does. I am too. And it smells amazing. This may have started a thing. Maybe we're going to, have to start making desserts more often. <laughs> What's funny is I don't think I've ever made this. I'm, I'm actually going to make it according to the recipe other than the sweet potatoes because it's like it, usually I just throw uh, crushed tomatoes in here instead of doing the rotel and the tomato sauce. So I'm curious to see if it how it turns out. It's a little different. I'm on the fence about making the chili because we still have a chicken chili in the fridge from uh, Friday. Totally feel you. Yeah, if I didn't have a home for this one, 
I would not be making either because I actually have this chili in my freezer right now. <laughs> it's a really good chili though. It is. I mean, we make it, we make it very often. Yeah. What? What'd you say, Lily? I said that means you could freeze it though, Kim, so you could have it later. Or you could make the turkey sloppy joes. Those are my other like go-to with ground turkey. That's super good. I could make it and have it for lunch as a sweet. I just, hmm, what time is it? Ah, it's 3.15. I know it's funny. We kind of started out slow with the bars because they take a little while, but now we're speeding along. So, so I was a little worried we were going <laughs> to have a really long session. So we're against boiled onion flavor in here. So I always cook my onions first, caramelize them, and then I shove them to the sides and I throw the turkey in and finish it all off. So if anybody else has those feelings, you can try that too. So I'm 
going to make applesauce instead because I got a bunch of apples that need to be made into applesauce. So um, for a sweetener, I have that coconut sugar. I or I could use honey or maple syrup. What do you guys think would be the best? Yeah, go the coconut, coconut sugar. sugar. Yeah, yes. I think it'll actually thicken it up kind of nice too. Okay. I'll give that a try. Thanks. Yeah. Hey, Kim, I just looked on the blog too. There's a slow cooker chai apple butter. Oh yeah, I saw that last year. It looks so good. That sounds yummy. Yeah, let's see what's in it. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, a chai tea. tea. Yeah, oh, that's so interesting. Oh, five, wait, that's weird. It's like it says five cut it, cooking apples cored. Oh, some are cored, some are cored and peeled. So you got 10 apples total. Half a cup of, or a quarter cup of coconut sugar, um, a two inch slice of lemon peel, and 10 bags of chai tea. That's interesting. That is interesting. I thought okay. you would have just put the chai spices in it. Yeah. Yeah, I remember looking at that last year. Sounds yeah. good. It sounded really good. I mean, you can't go wrong with apple butter in the first place. Right, yeah. You know what's funny too about the reset? Like I, I don't even use pepper anymore after not using it for the, that three weeks. <laughs> I'm gonna use it right now, but I'm just saying like, it's kind of funny how like on my own food, I don't really, oh. I was missing garlic. On the reset. Like I oh. garlic in almost everything and I was surprised it wasn't on there. Well, I guess I didn't feel like I was missing it too much because it was in all the salad dressings. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I see what you're saying. Uh, but there was a lot of garlic in the Asian stir fry. Yeah, there was one. There was one thing that where it was in there. That's true. And then that garlic tahini sauce on the squash. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. See, Kim, you're just no. <laughs> I'm losing it. I'm losing. It. The garlic veggies are my favorite. I eat those a lot. I didn't make that one. How was that? So good. I love them. How is it different than the Asian vegetables? I would guess because of the lime juice or lemon juice you put in, <clears throat> in it, it doesn't have the as much probably of the um, soy aminos or the coconut aminos. Yeah, aminos. yeah. I'll have to look at that one and try it. And Actually, it, I, it just has carrots and quinoa. And stuff so everyone knows the chili is really good. Oh, good. Even my husband liked it. He'll tell you. <laughs> Perfect. It's really, it's really tasty. Yeah. Love it. Hey. Yeah, it smells good. It tastes good. I added cinnamon and nutmeg because that goes with sweet potatoes. Ah, interesting. I would have never thought to do that, but it makes sense. And he's not a sweet potato person like you, Deanna, and even he says it's good. I know someday I should probably do it, shouldn't I? I should just make it with the sweet potatoes. 
just once. Right? Yeah, just to see. Just to see. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Kathy. So the um the Asian vegetables, the Asian stir fry, that one is the one that has the Napa cabbage, correct? Uh, no, it had, well, I it probably does, but I subbed in bok choy. There you go. Yes, Napa cabbage or bok choy. Yes, that's that's, and then the garlic vegetables. Instead of that, there's zucchini. Okay. And then yes, there is a little bit of a difference in the sauce, but not not a ton of a difference. But yeah. Um, yeah. And of course you don't have garlic in the other ones, but I always made the, um, garlic vegetables with, or garlic veggie stir fry without the garlic because we don't do garlic in our house. So, which is crazy. Cause I was like raised on garlic. Yeah. It that's was, interesting. It was the first garlic and onion were the first two ingredients in every single recipe that ever went in to anything. That's how my childhood was too. Yeah. Were your parents German by chance or your grandparents? Uh, Scandinavian. Okay. <laughs> Everything was garlic and onion. And uh, celery would round it out. Um, oh yeah. 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 Hey, Jess, I have an off-topic question for you. I watched Bruise yesterday after I saw you posted about it. That wasn't Halle Berry as the main star, right? That was somebody else, right? She was just the producer? No, it was Halle Berry. No way. She's got to be, that couldn't possibly have been her. Yeah, she looks amazing. She looks I mean, like well, a 40-year-old. She's got to be like 60, right? right? Probably. Yeah, she, she looks amazing. I could not believe that. Yeah. And all those um, burpees and jumps she was doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was killing it. Did you like the movie? I did. I almost didn't get for, through the first 10 minutes. Um, yeah. And then I'm glad I did. So. Yeah, it, it has a good ending. And yeah, it was good. Yeah. Fun fact, my mom and dad went to the same high school as Halle Berry. Ooh. <laughs> Fun fact. That's cool. Okay, wait, so how old does that make her? Oh gosh, um, well, my mom and dad are 61 and 62. Oh, I don't know, I think God. she was, she's younger. I think she was, I don't know exactly how far off they are in age, but somewhere I feel like there. I saw an interview with her and she's like turning 60 or something like that. Yeah, That's she's, yeah. Yeah, she's, in, yeah, she's crazy, awesome. yeah. Awesome. That is incredible. Yeah, incredible. Yeah. I think her and Jennifer Lopez, I'm like. Right? Me too. What? And Gwen Stefani also. Gwen Stefani's up there with crazy looking non aging. <laughs> yeah, but how old is she? She's not 60. She's like 40 something. Let's right? Look, let's. I let's think she's 50. I thought Gwen Stefani was 50. Really? I was, I was just talking to Scott just yesterday about a concert. She's 52 about a concert that I went to at a really small venue. And I couldn't remember if it was letters to Cleo or no doubt, but I mean, if it was no doubt, I mean, it was before they were famous. Like it just had, cause I mean, this venue was tiny and I remember being so close and I've seen No Doubt multiple times, so it's like hard for me to remember. I don't know. I went to a lot of concerts growing up. I went to a really good one with uh, No Doubt and Blink-182. It's one of my favorites. Ooh. Yeah, I bet that was good. All might have been pretty much rock. Lots of Metallica, lots of Rush, Tool. Stone Temple Pilots, Live, Kiss, Pink Floyd. <laughs> it wasn't Pink Floyd. Okay, it was Gods of Waters. Pink, the Pink Floyd one was good. Well, awesome. uh, this was uh, lead singer of Pink Floyd, Roger Waters. He did a tour 
and you know he's on stage and singing the songs it's like wow it sounds like it just stepped off of dark side of the moon it, it, it was his voice so it was really cool it was like listening to pink Floyd live but it was good but and bon jovi was my first concert mine was the Bee Gees. who said Bee Gees? me oh no way mine was, was mine was, was six <laughs> Nice. Seriously, I think mine might have been too. It was either Styx or Don Henley. <laughs> I don't remember. I have also seen Don Henley multiple times. But how many times have you seen Styx and not had to pay for them because they were just playing somewhere? <laughs> That's my jackpot. I've seen Rush, Metallica, and Styx seven times each. No, I saw well, Rush. I that's his favorite band, Rush is. It's funny, I, yeah, I, we were all going up, I was in college and we were all going for a friend's birthday and then something happened and she didn't even end up going, but we're all like, well, I guess we gotta go. <laughs> what concert was, what year? I don't know, they had a rabbit jump out of a hat. It was Press like them. a giant blow up hat. Okay, was, did, uh, were they up the entire time? Oh boy, that's, they, they did that for two concerts and then the third, uh, the next album, they brought the big rabbits up on either side of the stage. One yeah. pulled up a gun, turned, shot the other one. They both deflated. I don't remember that. Then <laughs> that wasn't, uh, it was It was either Presto or Roll the Bones. Then. Okay, could be. Yeah. I don't know. It was a long time ago. <laughs> uh, you're talking 1992. 92. 92, because uh, I was a, I was, we were still living in the dorms. It was my freshman year college okay it's probably rolled well. that's a good enough i only have a couple of hundred albums all right how's everybody's chili looking coming together look i couldn't resist i tried the cranberry bars they're delicious ah i know i keep looking at them and i'm like are they cool i just felt the pan i'm like are they cool enough yet let's do this You know, they would, that would be a really good topping over ice cream. <laughs> oh, I mean, you know, over cauliflower the cauliflower ice cream. Ice cream. <laughs> you, have you made that yet? No. Oh my gosh, Deanna. I know, I know. I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> it's funny to know. That's what you're doing. You are totally I know, and I've got, I think I have enough cashews too. So I should just do oh, it. Man. You should really should because I've I got mean, cauliflower. I've got maple syrup. <laughs> It's a green for gosh darn sake. A I'm, green for a dessert. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna find the recipe right now so I can soak my uh we, should, we could do that on here. I think we should do that in January. Well, it's a fixate recipe. That's why I haven't put it on. Oh, okay, okay. Let's see here. It's just so good. Like everybody has like so the friend's house that we bring desserts over to and everything, she has the egg sensitivity. She just said, because I haven't made it since it was like Super Bowl two years ago that I made the, um, I made white chocolate blondie brownies that are very similar to the, to the brownies that are in Fixate. And then I made the cauliflower ice cream. And she just asked me like two weeks ago, maybe it was three weeks ago. So when are you going to make that ice cream again? <laughs> I love it. And I'm like, okay, I told you when I made it. It is only for when it is us, not like a big clan of people. Because, I mean, it's a, it's a lot of cashews that go in there. Yeah. Pricey, pricey ice cream. <laughs> right. Yeah. And if, you know, I mean, but I don't know. It's so creamy and you don't taste. You do not taste any type of cauliflower or any vegetable. It, it's just it's so creamy and rich and sweet and delicious. All right, I'm gonna start soaking my, my cashews right now. Boil the water before you soak them, you should extract that process. What'd you say? If you boil the water before you soak them, like if you use boiling water, it you can shorten the soaking process. Oh, by how much? Like I could make it tonight? Yes. Oh, yeah. okay, let's do that. Yeah. 
I'm oh, pretty okay. sure, like Google it, but I'm pretty sure it's like an hour. I'm almost can, positive that it's like, cause normally you're supposed to like soak it three to, or four to overnight or four hours or overnight or something. But yeah, I'm pretty sure that you can boil water and it's, and it shortens it to an hour. That's funny. You only have to soak them an hour for the um, zucchini soup. Zucchini. Oh, milk. it just says at least, oh, cover in boiling water and soak at least two hours. There you go. But I will say that it does take, well, it's early where you are though. Yeah. Because it takes early. about, it takes about four hours for it to freeze. And you're going to want to pull it out and let it sit for like 15 minutes before you start trying to fudge mm -hmm. with it because right. it's like as hard as a rock. Okay. Oh, I like gotta go water. folks. Thank you so much, everybody. Bye Kim. This is the best time. I really love it. You guys see you tomorrow, most of you. Bye Kim. <laughs> All right. Bye Kim. Thank you. Thanks Deanna. I suppose is everybody done with the recipe too? Cause we could probably knock off here. Oh, it looks like we did we lose Jess. We're we're down to just the four of us anyway. Do you guys need the recipe any longer? No, I do not need it. No. Okay. All right. Well, then we'll just stop the recording and uh, yeah, move on here. Kate, what? what